This morning let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, I'll read verse 11 and 12. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed in, is in itself. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Come down to verse 29. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree which whose fruit yields seed to you, and it shall be for food. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. So we are talking about financial prosperity, financial and material prosperity, a very important aspect of our Christian life. And uh, <clears throat> this is the second part of that series. In the first part, I showed you how prosperity is God's will for you. It is God's plan for you and God's will for you. And in the second part of the series of teaching, I'm showing you how God prospers a person financially. I'm showing you how God takes a person who lives in lack and want and who lives in poverty and bondage to finances and how God blesses him financially and materially. I told you, you should not be ignorant concerning God's ways. Sometimes it's sad to say that even Christian people are ignorant of his ways and they think that God can do things any way in every way. You know, a Tamil it comes out very nice. They say, Yabdiyavde. Most people, they pray and they say, God, Yabdiyavde, Andavare Yabdiyavde. God somehow do something for me. That word is repeated often by people. Somehow God will do. And when I ask them, what do you mean by somehow? They blink. They don't know what they mean. I ask them, are you trying to tell me that God will go rob a bank and give you? <laughs> or oh, God will rob a suitcase of money from heaven? What do you mean somehow God will bless you and prosper you? See, a lot of people live their lives based on assumption that God somehow will do things for them. And I tell you, my friend, you'll be disappointed. <laughs> If you are living your life based on assumptions. Because God doesn't do things somehow or anyhow. No, God is a very orderly person. He is not a person of confusion and chaos. Eh? He is a very planned person. He plans everything. Eh? And he is a very orderly person. There is no chaos and confusion with God. And that is why as a believer you should not be ignorant of his ways. You should not be like the other people and say God somehow will prosper me. No. God has revealed very clearly, very plainly in the Bible in such a way that anyone can understand and that is what the Bible is about and that is why it's so important. The Bible teaches us how God takes a person who has lack and want, lives in insufficiency and how God blesses him and prospers him financially and materially. So there are many ways in the Bible but we are looking at just few ways in which God prospers a person. So I told you the first way is Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 where it says, The blessing of the Lord, it make it one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it and neither does toiling you know, increase it. That's the first way. God empowers you. God puts an anointing within you to prosper you. That power within you, that anointing, that favor that is upon your life will cause you to prosper. That will push you up. That will propel you for success in life. Then the second way we are looking at is a covenant. God prospers people by his covenant. I showed you how God made a covenant with man. In the, we looked at the covenant of Abraham. Abraham was a heathen person. He worshipped the sun, moon and stars. But God comes to him and God gives him some astounding promises there. Unbelievable promises. So Abraham looks at God and says, what is the guarantee? What is the assurance that you will fulfill all these things in my life? And there we see God, you know, makes a covenant with Abraham. God promises him and makes a covenant with him. And you see, because of the covenant that Abraham and all his seed after him were blessed there. So blessing through the covenant. There are many blessings, but one of them is financial blessing. We looked at that in great detail. And then third way that God uh, prospers you and me is through the laws of prosperity. God has ordained laws. And these laws are ordained to teach us something. And that is why I showed you that uh, every law, whether it is natural or spiritual, has been ordained by God and established by God. 
and every law teaches us something even the natural laws teaches us something so every law whether natural or spiritual teaches us something and uh, we looked at the law of gravity yeah? and uh, i showed you what it teaches there and we looked at the law of work yeah? maybe we'll talk about that in great detail some other time or maybe after we finish this that but law of work and we looked at all those things there these are all laws that have been established by god there and these laws teach us something every law teaches us something so the law of work teaches us how we don't work for a salary but god has put potential within us he has put abilities and talents and gifts within us and when we work all those talents and potential come out and then that brings us prosperity so we looked at those things and uh, fourthly i told you law of association that is by the person you you associate with this is a law also if you want to be a failure in life you want to be a useless person or good for nothing very simple all you have to do is just hang around with people like that and just find people like that who are failures who are good for nothing and just hang around all day with them and you will become one automatically but if you want to be a success then you have to associate with people who are successful these are all principles and laws that are the bible teaches how god prospers us so we are looking at this law the third law the laws of prosperity and uh, we are looking at how god prospers you the law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping i'm showing you that this law that has been instituted by god is instituted for you and me this is law is not for god eh? it's amazing god is so good at the very beginning in genesis chapter 1 verses 11 and 12 at the dawn of creation god established these laws here eh? law of seed time and harvest time law of sowing and reaping and then he says as long as earth remains these laws will remain they will function they will not cease there so that is what we are looking at the law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping and uh, i showed you who is a sower eh? we looked at who is a sower a sower is a person who as a lifestyle of sowing yeah that's what the bible says in second corinthians 9:10 it says there god gives seed to the sower yeah? he gives seed yeah? to the sower not to anybody and everybody so i showed you why god gives seed to the sower so who is a sower a sower is a person who has a consistent life of sowing he is not a person who sows once in a way or once in a bloom or no his whole life is dominated and controlled his whole life is lived by a planned way of sowing there so he is consistent in sowing he is not a person who sows once in a way there so he is a sower and why god gives seed to the sower i told you because only then the full potential of the seed is released that's why he puts it in the hands of the sower if he gives it to the person who keeps it and holds it eh, and cans it and sits on it then the potential of the seed will never be released this is what i'm going to you know show you every seed has tremendous ability and potential with it in it has a divine program in it there and if it is not released and sown into the ground then all that ability the potential will go to waste it will never fulfill its potential so that is why paul says in second corinthians 9 then he says god gives seed to the sower not to anybody and everybody to the sower there why because only then that seed will fulfill its potential there so we talked about all those things and then i began to talk about giving so we looked at uh, turn with me to ecclesiastes chapter 11 or oh, first we will look at uh, sorry proverbs 11 proverbs 11 we will look at first that one proverbs chapter 11 this is where we stop last time proverbs chapter 11 was 24 and 25 so we were talking about sowing and reaping and i showed you how many people they wait for favorable conditions to sow that means they wait until their income increases or they wait when they get extra money eh? they wait for favorable conditions because they say what they have or what they get is not sufficient even to pay their bills so how they can sow into the kingdom of god so this is what they say well when we get increase eh? when my salary increases or when i make a little more money or when something extra comes in 
then i will sow that means this is what they are saying they wait for favorable conditions to sow and i showed you the bible teaches that as long as a person waits for favorable conditions to sow that type of person will never sow and his circumstances will never change there because the person who looks at the sun and the rain and the clouds will never go into the field and work there he is just looking for some excuses to stay away so in the same way when you look for favorable conditions when you look for things to get better and get well so that you can sow into the kingdom of god it will never happen the devil will never allow you to sow because he knows when you sow you will prosper so that is why i showed you you don't wait for favorable conditions but rather you change your conditions favorable to you how you do that you do that by sowing in that very condition that you are in that's what i showed you last week that's why i said you may have little yeah you may have little with you and you may say well this is all i have and it's not sufficient well that is exactly what this law is teaching about the law of seed time and harvest time and this is why god has ordained this law why so that even if you have little god is teaching you how he will bless that little and bl- multiply it and cause it to come back to you in abundance so don't wait for favorable conditions don't wait for your situations and circumstances to change and say then i will so no my friend you change your situations and circumstances by starting to sow because the moment you start to sow there is a hope for a harvest you can expect an harvest and you can always hope and expect for your circumstances to change so that is why you don't wait for favorable conditions then the next thing i showed you is how the world's philosophy see the world's philosophy is totally opposite against god's word <laughs> the world says one thing in fact it says exactly opposite of what god's word says and that is why as a believer you should not live by the world philosophies you should not live by the newspapers the news that you read in the newspapers and televisions you don't live by that you don't live by the world's economy no no you don't live by the world standards or principles eh? because it is totally against god's word so we live by god's word not by the world's economy or the world's news or their standards no we live by god's word so i showed you how the world's philosophy is totally against whatever god's word says totally against totally opposite i think so the world says well don't give if you give you are a fool they say only fools give and they say well if you give you become a pauper eh you will have nothing if you keep giving all your money you will end up with nothing you will not have for your children they will be without anything this is what the world says so that is why we went to the scripture and i showed you what the scripture says the world says one thing but what god says and what his word says and that is where we came to proverbs chapter 11 was 24 proverbs 11 verse 24 i'll read verse 24 first so in verse 24 it's talking about two types of people here 24 and 25 eh two types of people it says there there is one who scatters and yet increases more and there is one who withholds more than what is right or just but it leads to poverty now this is amazing actually in the english it doesn't come out that good you know it says there there is one who scatters scattering the you know the idea of scattering gives the picture of little you know just throwing little here and there but you need to understand in the context of the farmer when the farmer scatters seed you know he doesn't just take a little seed and he throws no he is very liberal in his sowing you know he they have a basket tied up either to the front or to the back there and with both the hands you know this hand will go like this and he will just take seed and he will just throw it like that and he will take like this and he will throw he will be scattering seeds on both sides and he'll be walking this is how he sows there the english it's not that uh, clear and not you know that uh, apt but if you read the tamil it comes out very good vari yeah. it says grab and throw <laughs> yeah. tamil comes out very nice so this is what is saying it's talking about one type of person who is actually grabbing and he is throwing he is just scattering throwing everywhere everywhere he goes he is just throwing seed he is throwing money he is sowing everywhere he goes he is sowing now the world says if you give you will be empty you will be poor you will have nothing 
But listen to what the Bible says. It's talking about the person. Wherever he goes, he's sowing. He's a sower. He has a lifestyle of sowing. He's just scattering seed left, right, and center. And then it says, "Yet he increaseth more." Now, simple logic tells me: if you believe the world's philosophy, the more you give, the more you should run short, isn't it? <laughs> That is simple logic. That's the world's philosophy. They say you give more. it will decrease more but god's word is totally opposite it says the more you give the more you increase it choice is yours my friend are you going to be believe the world's philosophy or are you going to believe god's word and act upon his word there god's word is true it's amazing it says the more you sow the more you will increase yet it increase it this is the miracle of multiplication this is what god does when you begin to sow now i told you suppose you have 1 lakh rupees in your bank and you bring that 1 lakh and you give it here in the church then what will be a bank balance zero isn't it <laughs> but the bible says you will still have 1 lakh there that's what it literally means there not 1 lakh even more than that increase it how I don't know I wish I knew <laughs> I wish I knew how it increases I don't understand everything but I believe God's word <laughs> because simple logic tells me if I have 1 lakh and if I give away that 1 lakh that I must have zero <laughs> but God's word says when I give away that 1 lakh I have more than 1 lakh you ask me how I say I don't know it's just like the five loaves and two fishes how can you feed 5000 or 10000 people well I don't know but it happened I believe it <laughs> God did it Jesus did it Is there in the Bible I believe the Bible I believe God's word It's amazing God's principles are amazing That's why I tell you even till today nobody can explain the miracle of multiplication I'll show you it Nobody can explain no scientist can explain it Such a wonder of God Every time you see a harvest multi uh, the seed multiplying and coming back you see god's miracle power of multiplication in work even today my friend even today it's still at work and i tell you as long as heaven and earth remains as long as earth remains this principle will remain you will see the multiplication power of god's word working there so that is what it says here that is one person to scatters but then yet he increases and then he says there is another person who withholds <laughs> see this is what the world says you withhold don't give eh? get all you can can all you get and sit very tight on your can so nobody can come and take it away <laughs> but here it says god's word says there is another person who withholds more than what is just and what is right and what happens to him it leads to poverty now how this happens this also i don't know <laughs> here is a person who is withholding getting all he can scans all he gets and sitting tight on a scan but still he is becoming poor <laughs> is supposed to be rich become rich but the bible says he becomes poor was 25 oh i love this the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself the generous soul is talking about the person who is liberal in sowing the person who is generous in sowing that's what it talks about scattering eh? he just takes and he throws it he takes you know left and right he throws it there he sows it there that person will be made rich it says i tell you you cannot show me anywhere in the bible a person giving unto god and going back without anything going back a pauper now my friend you cannot show me one place in the bible like that anything that is taken and placed in the hands of god is blessed multiplied and comes back to you in abundance that is what we see in the bible even if it is little the last meal you have you remember the story the last meal when that was placed in the hands of the prophet of god there it was blessed and multiplied that is what it says here 
so choose to believe god's word and don't believe world's philosophy don't be tight handed don't be tight fisted be liberal be generous in your giving when it when it comes to giving to god be generous be li- be liberal don't be tight handed <laughs> somebody said well if you're tight handed that you cannot even receive from god because when god wants to come and put something into your hand you have to open your hand isn't it <laughs> so be open handed <laughs> don't be tight fisted turn with me to second corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 second corinthians but this i say he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully now here it's very clearly it's saying here he who sows sparingly the word sparingly is used here that means it's talking about the person who actually sows once in a way once in a blue moon you know there are many people who will give money once in a way once in a blue moon that's what i was talking about soaring sparingly and we talk about something that is sparingly used that means hardly used it's not used much once in a way only they use it so that type of person that's talking about it says that he who sows sparingly what will happen he will reap sparingly that means the harvest also will come only once in a way why because you you are sowed once in a way yeah. that is why the bible teaches how you need to be consistent in your sowing when you are consistent in your sowing then you are consistent in reaping a harvest yeah. when you keep on sowing you keep on getting a harvest one after the other keeps coming on but if you sow sparingly once in a way then you all the harvest is also sparingly once in a way only you get a harvest there you get a breakthrough there So that's what it's saying there in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly he who sows bountifully will reap bountifully you know one farmer gives a wonderful example there he talks about how he had 10 acres of land and uh, no i think it's 5 acres of land there and he need to sow seed in those 5 acres of land he had a machine you know they had these tractors the modern day machine is there so he had a machine where it will do all the work he just he just has to sit on top of that and you know drive it all over the field there that will till the ground cultivate the ground it will sprinkle the water it will get the field ready for sowing the seed and you know as it is doing that work it will also keep sowing the seed it will sprinkle the seeds there so that the seeds will go in get into the soil the machine will do everything there So he took this tractor and he went all over the field there the five acres of land he took this machine and you know drove it all around there and he finished the work of cultivating and sowing and all that and then after some months he was shocked because he found there was a gap nearly of 100 or 200 meters gap between each crop that was coming up yeah? that means in the five acres first he saw the crop coming then he saw about 100 200 feet gap there then again he saw crop there coming out then again 100 200 feet gap there so he, he couldn't understand why this happened because according to him the machine should have dispensed seeds everywhere and he should have got crop everywhere everywhere he should have got crop there but he saw there was a gap all over the five acres big gap you know 200 meters 300 meters gap there so he's wondering what happened and then he went back to the machine and he checked it up and he saw that the machine was faulty that means while he was doing the sowing the machine did not dispense seeds continuously yeah. suddenly it will stop dispensing seed and that is why you will find the gap so wherever it dispensed seed there he got crop wherever it did not dispense seed did not sow there was nothing there that is exactly what it's talking about here he who sows sparingly that means whenever or wherever you sow then only you will get a harvest if you sow once in a way you will get a harvest once in a way you don't get it continuous but if you keep sowing continue sowing as a lifestyle then the harvest keep coming every time every day is a day of harvest every day you keep why because every day you kept sowing so every day you get a harvest every day you keep reaping there so that is what second corinthians 96 is talking about now and i'll read verse 5 and verse 6 because when we talk about sowing i know that 
sowing is a most difficult time it's hard time you know it's not easy to sow especially when uh, you have little money and that money is very precious to you and i always say you know nowadays when people get their salary the bills or the payments they have is more than what they earn no matter how much they earn if they earn even 1 lakh they have payments for 1 lakh there yeah? so it's difficult to sow this is what you know people find it very difficult to sow whether they get little or whether they get plenty sowing time is a very difficult time it's a very hard time yeah? and i understand that and not only i understand that god understands that more he knows that the money that you get in hand is very little sometimes it's not even enough to pay your bills to meet your needs there so god knows that he understands that i always tell people see before we are living in a, a period where tremendous changes is taking place you know before every year only from budget to budget only prices will increase <laughs> in between it will never increase yeah? only from budget to budget you know, when there's a budget only there will be some increase or decrease but today you cannot predict what will take place tomorrow today you'll find one price tomorrow morning you'll find there'll be a different price and every month prices are increasing higher and higher so i know that truly it is difficult to sow it is hard to sow because what people get sometimes is very little not enough because of the prices that are you know rising so high and it's very hard there and god knows more than that he knows eh? don't think that god doesn't know anything about you no my friend i told you god came into this world he was born into this earth he faced the same problems that you and me faced he faced the same temptations the only difference is he was victorious in everything that's the only difference he faced the same things there so he knows very well that is why he understands us very well he knows our difficulties he knows our shortcomings he knows everything about us that is why he sympathizes with us <laughs> is a wonderful high priest he knows our weaknesses and he knows everything about us because he was here he lived here he knows what it is to be here he faced all those things there so god knows that what you have is very little and he knows it's very difficult to sow very hard to give the little that you have but that is exactly why he is appointed this seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping see this principle this law was established not for god it was established for you and me amen this law is not for god my friend this law is for you and me god established this law of seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping for you and me why because he teaches through this law that even though you are poor you may have little that is what it teaches you how god takes that little that you have and when you sow it into the kingdom of god how he blesses it and how he multiplies it and how he gives it back to you as a harvest that is what he teaches you through this law that is why he is appointed it's for you and me it is not for him i always tell people you need to think practically god doesn't need your money my friend god doesn't need your money god is not dependent on your money to do his work no my friend god can raise up anybody so god is not dependent if god is not dependent on our money then why did he ordain this law well this is the purpose because sometimes even preachers don't understand it preachers many preachers don't understand this they think that you know god is dependent on their money some some people preach it also to the people there they don't teach them the principles from the bible they don't teach them god's ways god's principles from the bible i told you some of them you know adapt to cheap ways of uh, getting money from people and exploiting people for money and any time when you give and you don't give based upon god's word and god's principles it will never be a blessing to you i know many people who have given not based upon god's word and god's principles they have many reasons for giving and sometimes they don't reap because the motive for giving is totally wrong you know one person was telling me how because he listened to sowing and reaping and seed time and harvest time and he says well i don't believe the principle you know i don't believe so i asked him why do you don't believe it he says no you know i have listened to some of the preachers and i have been sowing but i didn't get anything 
So I said, well, name the preacher that you have listened to. And he told me a name. I don't want to mention the name here. He told me the name. But I said, well, you sowed in the wrong place. Did you check the scripture that he is quoting? That person never quotes scripture. And even if he quotes scripture, he'll twist it. See, they exploit people because they want people to give money. They think that God's work can only be done and carried out if people give money. <laughs> See, preachers don't understand it. So that is why in the church it's always give, 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 give. They even scold people for not giving. <laughs> they will not teach people how to give biblically. Sometimes they go to the extent, I know one preacher who was actually said it in the church. He says, well, if you don't give your tithe and offering, then I may have to close down this ministry because we will not have money to pay the rent. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He literally said it in the church. If you don't give money, if you don't give your tithe and offering, I'll have to close down. He said, well, I tell you, my friend, even if nobody gives you, I will not close down. Amen. Because I know that people cannot meet the needs of the ministry. Only God can meet the needs of the ministry. And this is what preachers fail to understand. But thank God I understand that. I understand that no man can meet the needs of the ministry. I can challenge anyone. If there is anyone here who can say, well, I can meet the needs of the ministry, please meet me after the service. And I will tell you my needs. And you know what will happen? You will start coming to church here after that. And if you see me anywhere in... <laughs> Outside, you will turn your back and you will run away. You will say, this is a dangerous person to deal with. You will say, you are asking so much. Yes, I know how to ask big. I have a big mind. Because I worship a big God. So when I ask, I ask big only. Amen? See, God is not dependent on your money. Why tithes? Why offerings? You know, why all these things? Does God want your money? Is he dependent on your money? Unless you give, can the church go? Unless you give, can the gospel go? No, my friend. God is not dependent. These things were not ordained for God. It was ordained and established to prosper you and me, to change our situation. It is to bless you and me. This is how God takes the from the little that you have and he blesses and he gives it to you back in abundance. That is what harvest is about. What is harvest? Harvest is whatever you are sown, you get back much more. It multiplies and comes back to you much more. That is harvest. So that is why seed time and harvest time, sowing and reaping, it has been ordained and established for you and me. God is so good. You know, God is such a wonderful person that in the very beginning, in the very dawn of creation, God established this principle. Why? So that there can always be abundance on this planet earth. <laughs> always abundance. That is how this principle and is being ordained and established. So that there will always be full and much more than what people need. Because the same God also told man to populate the earth and fill the earth. He's the same God who said populate the earth and fill the earth. That is why he ordained this principle. Why? So no matter how many billions and trillions of people fill this earth, there's always much more. Amen? How? By this principle. That's why this principle was established at the very dawn of creation. So sowing is for us. It's not for God. Sowing and reaping is for us. And I, I know that sometimes it is difficult. It is hard. I know that the money you get sometimes is so little in your hand that, you know, by the time you write out all your bills... Even what you have is not sufficient to pay the bills. So now you're thinking, how can I give my tithe? How can I give my offering? How can I sow in the kingdom of God? It's very hard. It's very difficult. I know that God understands it. But then come to this verse, Psalm 126. <clears throat> verse 5. Here the psalmist uses a figurative speech here. It says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then it says, he who continually goes forth weeping and bearing seed for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing and bringing his sheaves with him. Now, when you read your Bible, you need to understand what has been said there. It's not saying that you have to cry and weep. 
and give it and then you know you will reap in joy it's not talking about that eh? because sometimes some people will take things literally eh? they will cry and shed tears and give then only you will reap in joy it's not talking about that is just using agricultural language is using the picture of a farmer here and that's what it is the bible is a very figure here is using a figurative speech here is taking the picture of agriculture he's talking about a farmer here and he's talking about how when a farmer goes to sow he uses the word here sow in tears actually it is sowing is hard work it is difficult work that is what it symbolizes here it's not easy work it is hard work it is difficult work it is laborious work nowadays you have tractors and even tractors also people who are rich and have money only can buy them not anybody and everybody can use it but those days you know few years back when there was no tractors sowing time was very difficult because it had to be done manually i understand these things because i have worked in the villages <laughs> i worked in the villages and i have seen how they do these things so sowing time is the most hardest time in their life it is the most difficult time because the job has to be done manually that means you will find a line of people on the field there let's say if they have 5 acres of land just imagine you go there and look at 5 acres is a vast portion of land there eh? so there will be people standing in a line there and they have to get into that field and they have to get the legs dirty there and they have to you know cover that entire five acres there they have to do it manually it's hard work laborious work that's what it's talking about it's not talking about crying and sowing so that's what he's saying there in verse 5 those who sow in tears shall reap in joy and it says there in verse 6 he who continually goes forth weeping bearing seed for sowing that means every time you take seed and you go to sow it's difficult it's hard it's laborious and not only that when you sow there's no immediate rewards no immediate blessing <laughs> many months later only you get a harvest for every seed there's a harvest appointed immediately you don't get any reward immediately you don't get any blessing immediately you don't get a harvest you don't go out there in the field sow the seed today and tomorrow morning go reap the harvest no my friend <laughs> So that is why sowing is referred to as hard work, laborious work, difficult work there. Eh? It's not easy. It's very difficult because no rewards, no immediate rewards also. <laughs> you just go and work, you don't get any immediate rewards. You have to wait for the harvest to come. So that is what it's saying there. Sowing time is a very difficult time. It's a very a hard time. But then it says harvest time. <laughs> Oh I tell you you need to see the farmers during the harvest time you need to see that a whole town is celebrating there's singing there's dancing there's rejoicing everybody on the streets they're buying and shopping and buying clothes and buying this and buy that why because it is harvest time harvest time is rewarding amen you have sowed when you sowed didn't get any reward no blessing nothing you just had to work hard no immediate benefits no immediate blessing you just sowed you are, you had to work hard the labor is work but then it says when it comes to the harvest time oh it's rejoicing they rejoice why because now they are getting rewards they are being blessed for all their work for all the toil and labor they see the answer there that is what it's talking about here and that is why you need to understand this that this is the whole reason why god ordains seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping because you need to understand that when you take that seed and when you sow it on the ground you are not a loser no my friend god takes it blesses it multiplies and brings it back to you as a harvest why harvest harvest is much more than what you need harvest is abundance of whatever you have given whatever you have sown so that you will have much more in life that's the whole purpose of it so how do you change your situation and your circumstance you don't wait for favorable conditions you don't wait for things to get better my friend you start wherever or whichever condition you are this is how you change your way of living you change and turn around your situation and circumstances well even if you have little don't fear don't believe the lies of the devil and don't think that you will be a loser no i'll show you you're never you'll never lose you're not a loser when you give 
I'll show you that in a moment. But this is how God blesses and prospers you. When you take that little and when you sow it, then God blesses it, multiplies it and causes it to come back to you in abundance. Why? So that you'll have much more. So that you can eat, you can save and you also can give liberally. That's the whole purpose of giving. Well, turn with me back to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Let's come back there. I'm not through with that still. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. <clears throat> now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now I told you, when you read your Bible, you should never take things for granted. You should, you should read it slowly and try to understand what you read here. Oftentimes people read but they never understand what they read. And that is why sometimes people find, you know, meditation and all that boring because they read but they don't understand. So you need to understand what you read and when you start understanding what you read, I tell you, then your Bible study and meditation, everything becomes exciting, it becomes thrilling. It's like an adventure. You are so, you know, caught up in that. So verse 10, Paul is saying here, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. So he's talking about God and he says, how God supplies Seed for sowing and bread for eating. He gives you both. Isn't that wonderful? Eh? But our people eat everything. They eat the seed, they eat the bread also. Nothing for sowing. He gives you seed for sowing and bread for eating. The seed is for sowing, not for eating. Eh? If you eat the seed and eat the bread, then you have nothing to sow. And if you don't sow, you cannot reap a harvest. You cannot expect a harvest. You cannot even dream or think about a Harvest. So that is what he's saying here. But just listen to the second part of that verse there where it says there, after talking about how we give seed to the sower and bread for eating, and then he says, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now, I want you to look at this verse carefully. It says there, and supply and multiply what? Say it boldly. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> All are very weak, I think. <laughs> supply and multiply what? Seed. Which seed? Next word. I think it's not in your Bible. Only in my Bible it's there. <laughs> Next word of seed. 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 Which is? Sown. Every word is important, my friend. God multiplies which seed? The seed that is sown. Not the seed that is in your hand. Not the seed that is in your storehouse. See, a farmer can, you know, have a storehouse and he can have bags and bags and bags of seeds stored there. But I tell you, that will never multiply. That will never multiply, my friend. In fact, if he keeps that too long, that will perish. All that will be destroyed, it will get spoiled there. See, that is why you need to understand the Bible correctly. Some people are wondering, why my money in the bank is not multiplied? Well, God doesn't say he will multiply that. Here it's very clear. He says, well, the seed that is sown will multiply. That is why I tell people, see, when you give, you are not a loser, my friend. That's the world's philosophy. And don't believe the world's philosophy because I told you, the man that is without God, he doesn't understand God. He doesn't understand the ways of God. His heart is darkened. His mind is darkened. He's alienated. He's cut off from God. He doesn't know how the kingdom of God operates and functions. He's zero to the things of God. Then how can you follow his ways and believe what he says?
that's why you need to understand god's word correctly the seed in your hand will never multiply the seed in the storehouse will never multiply that's why i said you can take the seed you can put it in your hand you can admire it you can shine it you can polish it you can keep it in the showcase you can do whatever you want but that will never multiply my friend the seed that is sown in the soil is what god will bless and prosper and multiply and give it back to you you know as a harvest that seed which is sown only will multiply that is why i tell people when you give you're not a loser you are a gainer my friend a farmer understands it very well when he takes seed and when he puts it in the soil he doesn't say oh all my seed is gone into the ground it's a total waste <laughs> does he say it no my friend he doesn't say that seed is precious for a farmer because that's his living that's how he lives his life is a life of sowing and reaping <laughs> seed time and harvest time that's a, that's the way he lives you can say it's his profession <laughs> so when he sows when he takes seed and scatters it liberally you know liberally and generously into the ground he doesn't come and say oh i've just lost all my seed precious seed all gone to the ground i don't know what will happen no my friend he doesn't say that you know why he knows that unless that seed is released into the ground only then whatever he has released into the ground will come back to him in a harvest god will bless it and multiply it and give it back to him in harvest and abundance more than what he needs that is what paul is saying here so that is why i tell people don't wait for your conditions to change don't wait for life to get better don't wait for your financial condition to improve to so no my friend you change your conditions you make it better for yourself how by starting wherever you are with whatever you have in the very little i always say when you are faithful in little you are faithful in much that is god's word you start wherever you are the little that you have you start with that because that is what it says there when the money leaves your hand and goes to the kingdom of god i tell you it's never a waste it doesn't leave you it doesn't leave you it comes back to you in abundance it come back it comes back to you in multiplication whatever you given is multiplied 30 fold 60 and 100 fold and it comes back to you god gives it back to you he doesn't take it my friend that's why i told you in the beginning god is not dependent on your money no the whole reason why he is ordained it so that he'll bless you and prosper you so that he will take whatever you give and he will bless it and multiply what you give and give it back to you in abundance as a harvester so that you will have much more than what you want you will have for yourself you will have to give the best for your children you will have savings plus you will have to give liberally and generously that is why seed time and harvest time sowing and reaping well i'll just stay with this next week we'll come back and we'll continue to look at second corinthians 9:10 because it's not over it says there you know after saying this god multiplies the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness that amazes me because god connects righteousness here he says increase the fruits of your righteousness with money <laughs> all along people told if you have money you are not a righteous person but here it says the fruits of righteousness and paul is talking about one of the fruit of righteousness is money financial prosperity that means one of the fruit is money and i believe with that because it's in connection with other scriptures also jesus said the same thing he said seek ye the kingdom of god first and then what he said all other things shall be added unto you so paul connects here prosperity financial and material blessing where as the fruit of righteousness <laughs> he says god will increase the fruit of your righteousness it relates that to financial prosperity there it's amazing and not only that next week i'll show you the multiplication power of a seed see that is why i tell people we need to have the mentality of the farmer or the mentality of a sower we need to understand the potential of the seed every single seed has been programmed by god it's amazing every single seed has been programmed by god and if you take an apple seed you know it's very small very tiny you take it and you put it in your hand it may look as nothing to you but i tell you my friend within that apple seed there is life within that apple seed there is a program god has programmed every seed there to fulfill a destiny every seed has within it a law 
a life, a law that will fulfill its destiny there. This is what I'm going to talk about next week. But shall we all stand? When you get a picture of that, it will change your life because your mind will not be on the seed that you sow, but rather it will be on the harvest. This is what God wants us to learn. Eh? Don't set your mind on the seed. When you keep looking at the seed, it's difficult to sow. But he says, look at the harvest. Eh? Set your mind on the harvest. Look at that. Look beyond sowing. Yes, now it may be difficult. Now it may be hard to sow. But look beyond that. When you sow, in the, even though it's hard, even though it's difficult, there will come a day when you have a harvest of whatever you sow. So set your mind on the harvest. Every time you give, you need to have that in picture. A harvest in mind. Whatever you give to the kingdom of God should come back to you, multiply it. That's the whole teaching here. Shall we just lift up our hearts and our voices to God and just thank him for his word. Such a wonderful God. He has made things so easy, so simple, so plain that anyone can just understand it and follow it. That's why I tell people there is no excuse to live in poverty, lack and want. No, even the poorest of poorer can be blessed. You can change your life by following God's principles. His laws will work. As long as earth remains, these principles will work. It will never fail. So believe in God, believe in his word, believe in his principles.